Uh, here we go working in the backyard on the boat again. We're gonna try and work on getting these wiring chases and all done. Work on getting that bilge finished, get it glassed up and watertight, and just keep moving the ball down the field. Well, here we go. I've been talking about finishing up this bilge area. And all I'm trying to do here, as I talked about before, is I'm getting ready to glass this. So I'm just trying to kind of put a round over on it and uh, get it where I can come in here and put some glass on it and seal it up watertight. And uh, you can get an idea here of the area I'm working. I'm just using that little file sander. It's very handy for this stuff. And, you know, this is not uh, truly cosmetic. not going to be fair. It's not going to be pretty. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure it's all watertight. And you can see here I'm trying to just try and rough up where I have those little backer boards for the trim tabs. Kind of put those in just to give me a little more meat, you know, in case those screws run long. And I may cover that later, but that's all I'm doing right here. All right, well, it ain't pretty. All I'm trying to do is get kind of put a round over on that. Get this in here. I'm going to come in here and uh, may have to pull some thickened epoxy, get some thickened epoxy just to kind of help these corners. Help some of this stuff lay down. So we'll try and go this direction. This is right right across here is where that lower motor mount brace will be. So there's a lot of undulation and all in here. So I'm gonna try and get me some thickened epoxy. Try and flatten this and I'm gonna put a piece of 1808 kind of you can see where this stops and where this stops and just kind of bridge that. Try and cut it in there. Try and give out a good smooth foundation. And all I'm trying to do with this plywood here is just put some finished cloth on it. Just put some finished cloth on this cloth on this uh, plywood just to help seal it all up nice and good. And then uh, these are little areas in here that you didn't see me. These are just like backing plates that I put in um, for the trim tabs, just to give them a little more meat behind there, just to have something more than this half inch plywood because this transom is on the, on the sides is only half inch. Now, there's a lot of glass back there, but I figured those blocks and all that would just make sure my screws and all never came through. So once again, I'm going to just put a little finished glass on that just to uh, just try and make it more watertight. Kind of same thing over here. And then I'm thinking once I get my get some epoxy working, I'm going to start putting epoxy in all these little holes. See if I can get that done today where it'll seal up. Back at it this morning. Yesterday, I actually didn't didn't get in here and video it, but I wound up running this glass and all in here, and it's not the best work I've ever done, but for what it is, uh, we covered all those backing plates, and now I'm in here, and I'm fixing to start running these pipes and all, just trying to get my layout. I think I'm going to use these on the risers, and then I'll come back and cut them all flush. You'll see how all that comes together, but I've just been working, you know, got all my measurements and all here on my offsets and all so it'll all come up hopefully it'll be nice and clean and then we're going to just keep going i did come in here yesterday when i did that fiberglass and and did all of these holes there's one up there that i missed uh, surprisingly that's the only one that i missed but we just uh come in here and ring those with that neat epoxy and uh seal them all up and then we put these pipes and hose in there and we'll come back and fill it so that's what we're doing today So obviously it's the next day and here it is. I'm uh, used my little paper plans there and made this template. And this is, you can see, I cut the holes out where those pipes are gonna come up. One of the things I did, and this was a mistake, is you can see those pipes are so far to the start, to the transom, to the back. So I put them in there as they're configured. And as they go down and the bell on the end uh, or the coupling, the, the receiving end, the female end, um, it's got them where it's tilted up. So that's, that's what you'll see me fighting here a little bit is as I keep them trying to, trying to keep the coupling in on the bottom, it's, uh, the config, the way that I cut the holes, it's got it laid up too much and it, it doesn't allow it to lay flat. So I'm trying to look at that and trying to get this and, and that, that PVC flexible pipe is really, really tight going into these couplings and stuff. And, uh, I actually fought 
trying to use it because it was so hard and I was worried about the glue setting up and not getting a good seal and and I transitioned back to yeah it is the right tool for the job here and you'll see me I, I'm going to use uh, the flexible PVC pipe, which is that white pipe, and there'll be some black pipe, but I also use some rigid fittings, these conduit fittings, these 90s and these 45s. I want to have the rigid pipes coming up because I think I can keep them organized and keep it neat. And ultimately, like this little three pipe set up here, I was very happy with the way that kind of came out. But I had to transition and uh, put the bell ends on the top and that way I could just I just had to put a coupling on the bottom so that's what you'll see me doing here so I kind of I'm, I'm still trying to feel my oats and figure out what's going on and it's not it's not really I don't feel really good about it but I have to push myself here um, and I'm like well let's just we're gonna just start gluing stuff up and 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 it's PVC and if it doesn't work we'll cut it out and we'll we'll redo it but we got to move forward and I'm, I'm, I'm it's just not coming together really easy so I get that first one in there and you can see this gives you an idea of how nice that pipe is to kind of work with. You know, this is a second piece and I wound up, uh, like I told you, I was using some rigid fittings. I wound up using a 45 right there because by the time that pipe turns that corner and then comes back around, it was just easier to use that rigid fitting and that pipe kind of worked straight into the fitting. So I had them. My, ultimately, my plan was is I got all the fittings that I thought I needed, and if I don't use them, I'll take them back. You can see I got a pile of them laying right there in the boat. So I wound up just kind of making that connection there, and like I said, this was I started struggling, and and the pressure kind of built with me because generally with plumbing and stuff like this, I'm really good. I've done a lot of I've done a lot of plumbing and stuff like that, it's, it, but for whatever reason, this. Uh, this experience was was just a little uncomfortable, so I just kind of had to start putting stuff together. And uh, if I with with the, the 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 disclaimer that if if I screwed up, I was just going to cut it out and I'd start over. But you know, it's all replaceable. You know, the holes in the boat were a lot more stressful than than trying to do this. Yeah, this is pretty funny. That's a 30 inch piece of pipe right there, and I needed that to put between them. But because of all those braces and everything, you can't get the floor. You couldn't get that piece piece of 30 inch pipe in there. So I tried to get a piece of flexible pipe, and ultimately, I think I cut the I cut that flexible PVC pipe too short, which is what made me struggle here. And what I wind up doing is actually going back to that piece of pipe and putting and cutting it in half to what I could get into the into that space and put a coupler in the middle. Now these are all wiring chases and I wanted to start on the wiring chases because it's important that they're watertight but it's not as important as drain lines especially drain lines that are that are a function of forced water like live well raw water drains where where you're actually pumping water into the boat and they got to get it out. So I wanted to kind of experience um, these these wiring chases first and there like I said you could you can see me putting that coupling in the middle but uh I wanted to get my kind of kind of get my grounding with with working with the wiring chases because when I got to the plumbing part the truly the drain part where if they leak you know we're going to have a water source in the boat and I, I I wanted to have I wanted to have a good hold of the way things were going to work before I got to that and like I said this is this stuff this plumbing stuff is not new to me I've done it a lot but it's just, you know, uh, it, it was just different. Um, you can see here with that little piece of pipe, I'm going to cut that piece of pipe probably five times because I cut it long. I know I can always cut it again. You hear me say this a lot. I, I can always cut it again, but I can't cut it longer. So there it is again. I cut another inch of it off, and I'm trying to get that 45 to work right there and there. I cut it again, and you wouldn't believe it, but I'm going to come back and actually cut it almost in half. Watch. You'll see. It's kind of funny. Um, so as all this is happening, I started laughing. I'm, you know, I'm just laughing to myself because it shouldn't be this difficult. It just shouldn't be this difficult. But because I'm trying to do a lot of stuff with this little skiff, I'm trying to make it uh, as user-friendly and as 
you know, having live wells and live release wells and raw water pumps and stuff like that is, it's, it's kind of a high bar that I'm putting out here. I feel like, you know, it's production boat stuff that, uh, I'm trying to imitate and, and create. So that's why you see me struggling through all this and, and all those wiring chases. That's two, two inch chases and an additional inch and a half chase that, you know, that's way more than I should ever need. And you're going to see me put another two inch chase on the other side right here. And that's just a backup. I mean, that's just that's just for whatever happens in the future. You know, it's just you know I'm putting too much in here. But once I, once I seal this floor up and I put the foam and all in the in the floor, there's there's no option to come back and run this stuff. So that's why I'm trying to be very uh, forward thinking and and doing too much. You know, I'm lucky enough. Like you can see me right here. I'm going off of this. You know, that's the centerpiece of the floor, and I've got it all designed, and I've done it all in the computer model. I'm just trying to transition that. And actually what happens here is I made a mistake as I was cutting the holes because I cut a 90 into that wall. You can see it the, anyway, the, the previously that, in, that piece of pipe. When I shouldn't do that, it should 45 out, and I'm going to actually fix that as we go forward. Um, I talked about the DWV fittings, or I will talk about them. And this is a prime example of these two pieces of pipe right here. This will actually be the forward little drain um, for the forward storage compartment. And I'm using DWV fittings here because all this is, is low pressure gravity feed. It's, but those couplings are just so short. So you can see here I glue these two pieces of pipe together. And I'm holding them together and I actually put some more glue you know, on the outside. But watch when I go to move this earlier that thing's going to kick. You'll see. But this is why I don't want to use DW fittings under the floor, and it would have been a mistake if I did. I believe long term it would have hurt me. But you know, this is a this was a battle throughout the day. Um, here I'm trying to see this. This is that two inch additional wiring chase. I'm trying before I was trying to figure out how it was going to come up there uh, and and. and enter into the console from the floor so I'm trying to learn like I talked about I had those other wiring chase fittings too far back so I cut this new one I cut a little bit farther forward you just a little bit so so that the that 90 degree fitting was a little more uh, straight up and down as it come up through the floor so that flexible pipe really is the right thing and the right way to go once you figure out once once I learned how to deal with it and how to use it um, it's, it is very difficult to dry fit, but once kind of like anything, once you put that PVC glue on it, it actually acts like a little bit of a lubricant to start with. So you can get it up in there and you just hold it. And once that glue sets, it's there. It's not leaking. It's not moving. So once again, just fighting through this stuff, trying to figure it out little by little. This is that additional two inch chase. And I'm just trying to get a, a, an image here of what it's going to look like coming up through there. And watch here. This is why. Uh, this is where I learned about those DWV fittings. And I just moved that pipe a little bit, but I can tell you, if you put Schedule 40 fittings on there, you can move that thing all over, and it's not going to come apart on you. So here we go. We're going to transition, and now we're going to run that two-inch wiring chase from the console to the bow. Now this wiring chase here is going to be primarily for the trolling motor because I plan on having the trolling motor batteries under the console but it'll also be for any lights any electronics in the future you know now it's all this live live screen and live view and stuff I wanted to have plenty of wiring chase there for whatever may happen in the future and whatever I may do so that's why you see that two inch pipe going forward and here this is a three quarter inch this will be pressure pipe so this will be what the pumps from the bilge area that provide wa raw water to the live wells, this will be what they run in. So you'll have this one that provides that live release well there where my feet are and then also the forward live well. So in the event that I ever run both of those at the same time, we're going to split the flow from that one pump. And then on the other side, you'll see me putting it in. It'll be the dedicated aft live well. It'll have one pump. Um, so it, it'll be for bait that's super important. So I'm just dry fitting those pipes up right there just because I want to get my template 
uh, again and make sure that everything fits and still have all the inch and a half piping to run all of the drain plumbing so I don't have any of that run right here so all, we didn't really get to that so I just stuck with trying to get whatever I could and whenever I felt stumped I just I jumped to something I felt like I could do and then uh, that allowed me to kind of process the things that I couldn't figure out while I was doing something productive or at least I felt like I was being productive but we got a lot done, don't get me wrong. Well, it was a bit of a struggle today, but we got all these back here. Well, all the wire chases and all done. We got this two inch pulled up to the front. We still got some uh, inch and a half live well drains and stuff like that. A little more complicated stuff. Kind of got the pressure water lines just kind of push together none of that right there is glued um, one thing I'll say is uh, you know had to, had to put a, a splice in the middle because the hole was too long to fit down in there but also if you're gonna use this PVC hose you need to make sure you got schedule 40 fittings those uh, DWV couplers and all they just don't have enough rope to them so that's why I'm stopping on some of this but uh, Got a lot done, a, lot, a little tougher, but you know, we fought through it.